Hi, welcome back to Flint's Collectibles. Today we're going to do a full read through and review on the last Ronin hardcover. But but before we do that, join with me today is Eli. my very special guest from my other videos, yeah. Eli, because <laughs> he loves the last Ronin, as you can tell from him playing with the figure right now. And if you have not read the last Ronin, there are going to be spoilers ahead of who it is and more about him. So if you do not want to find out, go ahead and click, click off the video and read for yourself. But before we do that, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. As Eli said, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate all of your support, whether you're watching or you're liking the videos or you're subscribing. We greatly appreciate all of it. So let's go ahead and dig into the story. All right, so here is the front of the book, The Last Ronin, with him on the front. It's got like a matte finish and then the Ronin and the words are glossy and then here's the spine of the book Real cool and then there's the back of the book with who is the last Ronin with a cover price of $29.99 so let's go ahead and dig in all right so we open up with a nice red interior page it's really cool the Last Ronin with some cool artwork <laughs> that Eli approves of. Story by Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, and Tom Waltz. Look at the background. Yeah, it's cool, ain't it? Got Last Ronin. A nice inter introduction. And then we start out with issue one with the classic cover of the Last Ronin. So the, the story starts out with the Last Ronin walking in some water going towards this city that's now got like walls around it and then this center point and it says wish for death wow so then we start out with the last running character coming into the city and he's finding a bike and he's trying to figure out what's going on in here and like the crime's real bad now so we just kind of follow him along with Boom. his journey of what's going on. And then how there's like these robots that have taken over that are pr protecting this city. It's how it seems and there's a guy inside that robot. And then we're going along following him to the city. He's running to a police car. Wow. <laughs> and then we meet like where the center of this city has this tower and that's where this guy is with all these computers and these crows so we're trying to figure out what's his angle and who he is oh that's a cool robot and yeah that, the robots with the red shields are like supposed to be like the police quote unquote fake police so the last run is trying to figure out who these people are what's their angle so we're still following him along while he's Find out these guys. That one has like four arms. Mm -hmm. And then here's that guy again with the computer. Well, last run in, thinks he's gonna he's come and save the day by himself. And then he finds out that he's a bit off more than he can chew. So he gets, he escapes, but he's all beat up. And this girl right here sees him go into the sewers so she's like oh, we'll figure out if he's okay and you find out that this guy is actually the grandson of shredder and this is his mom and she's keeping him in a cryo state type of ordeal and then here's the last ronin he's like talking about how like he's like failed his brothers and you see all their different weapons that he carries along with them and then here's he says we were all always so different 
like, so I don't know who it is. So you're trying to like figure out. And he's felt like he's let all of his brothers all stick down. And we think that he tries to like kill himself. And then she's like, holy crap. It's a no way. You were a mutant turtle. And then he just flatlines. And then this is like a memory he's having of him and his brothers and him interacting. And then we come across April. And she ends up saving him. And she's. And then this is like the big reveal of who it is. Who were you just talking to, Michelangelo? So then we know it's Michelangelo that survived. But what happened to all the other brothers? But then we go to part two. And it starts off with April having like a flashback of her interacting with Casey Jones and how they got married and how the brothers were attacked and like they're having a really hard time trying to fight off all the bad guys right now. And then she's having like this flashback memory of after Splinter, how he was so attacked and he's doing really bad and the turtles are all like, we need to take, it, take advantage of this opportunity and attack them. But they're like, wait, let's regroup. And they're all kind of like doing their own thing with it. And then we also see that April now has lost like an arm and a leg. So we're trying to figure out what's going on with that. And she's putting them on and she's having just a really hard time. And she's asking for, for some help. And then Michelangelo keeps having like this, like he's like he's talking to his brothers who have passed away. But it's actually not them. It's like they're it's almost always with them talking to them and leading them to like where you should be next and he's having this constant conflict of what to do what's the right thing and then here's what for Raphael goes on his own in the past as Master Splinter was attacked so he's gonna go take on all these guys and he thinks he's got it and he's gonna take them all out and he has this big like fight with the foot clan and he said you killed my father only one way this ends so he's like having this big old fight he's got spears in his back and then this girl comes and attacks him and he's having a fight with her and then you slowly see him drift off into the water and we know that with the next page it's just his weapon that that's how he passed away was he tried to go on his own and fight off all these guys and it didn't work so we go back to the future of him and april talking about like what their plan is and what's going on and what's happened and then here walks in casey marie jones which is casey jones was her husband but since he's passed this is his daughter so then Michelangelo is like slowly talking to him, her and like figuring out what's happened and what's going on and what's going on. The guy who's like the big bad guy who's in here like training with the Foot Clan getting stronger and stronger every day. Just really just a bad guy. And then we go back to April and Michelangelo talking and then she shows him the old training studio and this place where she trains and she shows him all the or they show each other the fallen artifacts and they got the journal from master splinter and they got the old weapons as well as the clothing this is cool it's like i've never read like any turtles books but i know enough that this is like the way the art style was on the like original ones from way back in the day when they were just black and white and you didn't know like who was who and it's like t talking about him going on a journey of like spiritual awakening and how when that happened he left and he went to go find himself in a way so it's like his personal journey from where he was overseas back to home to like where he is now so him and april are or uh casey are talking about it and then april reveals that she's got one of the robots heads who used to help them so then we go to part three and it's this 
guy that's in charge and his like personal like journey of what's going on with him and how he thinks he can do better by taking out the rest of the turtles and taking over the city so he decides to just keep being in control of everybody and he's actually like a real like bad guy at this point and then we go back to Michelangelo dealing with what to do next so he has a plan to attack the big bad guy but he needs help because he knows that he can't do it on his own so he's like can we possibly like start him back up and she's like no way because last time i did that they tracked him down and then here we were and then they talk about the story of him and how he helped them from back in the day and they know that that's how they tracked him and where they were and they found all the brothers and surrounded them and this is them like trying to hold the ground and they're getting surrounded yeah and there's Casey Leonardo. yeah Leonardo from back in the day that's so nice they're getting surrounded by the Foot Clan and the, this guy right here he's sending out the Bowsers and just totally surrounded about to be taken out and this cool like fight scenes I love the artwork on these mm -hmm. yeah isn't that cool and then this guy says like very well if I can't have you because he wants this robot he's like I'm just gonna blow everything up so there's Casey Jones' mask and all the brothers. There's his sword. Then, then we go to more of the present part of them. And how this girl's trying to find out where the turtle is. And he's underground, like recovering and getting better. And then they're going to like this old art style again, talking about their like story of what happened after everything blew up and how she was pregnant and like she was trying to figure out how to walk and they were kind of go back and forth between her telling a story and him and her talking and how like far they've come. And these people are coming to find Michelangelo because they know he's the last turtle left to come save the day because this guy is just off the charts going evil. He doesn't have, he doesn't have shoes. Yeah. He's barefoot, he has lots of barefoot. He's a real like tough guy. Yeah, he's like a gargoyle. Like, so he like tries to like, he's going like just crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're still trying to figure out what their next plan is. So April reveals that she's got this tank looking thing that they're gonna use. And so this is them trying to come in on the, the guy's base and they're like surrounded and pinned in they don't know what to do so then they go to part four where she's got a plan they're gonna create a distraction and then they're gonna just bust in and they're surrounded by all these crazy robots there's that guy again but he's looks crazy looks like darth vader yeah darth vader So the last going on, Casey's training and her and Michelangelo are talking. And he's like, you're pretty strong, but let's see if you can, it's against me. So they have a little fight and he's telling her about the things that he's learned from Master Splinter and his other brothers and how she needs to be more alert and training and just his style of fighting, which I mean, he's like jacked up and buff, like for his age. And then we go back to the telling the story of what happened to him after everything happened with his brothers had fallen. He went back to the place where they came from and trained under the guy that trained Master Splinter. And how he had like this new awakening. So then we go to where Master Splinter is coming back to this place where he came from, where he learned. And then it's him and Donatello. And it's telling the story about them being there and having a fight. And it turns out to be that they're getting their butts kicked by Master Splinter, because he, or, uh, sorry, Master Splinter right here, and then Master Shredder is on a horse. And then Donatello gets arrowed like crazy. And they lost, uh, it says, Your Master Splinter was all of these. 
So there's the Donatello's pole. He got attacked. We go back to like the telling the story of Michelangelo on his journey to become more at like peace with things and or to find some kind of happiness, I guess. Through all the bad. Then we go back to him and April talking again about their plan to attack the city. So they got like a this is like them now and then this is them preparing to surround it. So they're still like pinned down kind of trying to have this huge fight to take over this place to take it out. So we continue with that for a little while and then bam here comes that vehicle. So big. It takes two it's pages like to a show. tank. Oh yeah, it, it did take two pages, didn't it? Yeah, because how big it was. It's crazy. It's a cool looking vehicle. It's like a, it's like their old like bus from back in the day, but like a tank. <laughs> yeah, it's like a military tank mixed with a toy. And April sends off this electrode to take out all the Mausers, and then they end up putting that guy from earlier robot head into the thing. And then powers it up, and he's like Honeycut, because that's his name. Yeah, Here, cool. fire everything, kill them all. So he's gonna take it out, but then it blows up and creates this huge reaction and destroys this dude. This really bad guy. He's a god. Yeah, look at. Fader's literally blows him to shreds. But then Honeycut comes out of the because he's a oh, what is it? He's a nanobite, so now the nanobites take over the power of everything. So now all the robots that have been controlling all these people in this city are taken out, which makes the guy in charge really mad. So, and then this is like a cool little panel of Michelangelo, like thinking like, how much longer are you gonna just sit here? If they're making it, it's like his brother's talking to him until I'm done. That's how long. Stop talking. And then here's all his brothers talking about him and how he's he needs to step up his game. And he's like, I know I've been like really like struggling with this. I'm gonna finish this right now in this insanity. So then this is part five. So he's suiting up for this big fight that he's gonna have. And now that the city, the robots are down, but then this guy that's in charge of the grandson of Shredder, the left Ronin is coming after him. I'm gonna hunt and kill a mutant. And that's what he's saying. And it's the last Ronin he wants to take out. A lot's going on. Casey, April's daughter, Notice that there's more water in her ground. That's because the pump that pumps out the water has failed. And she's like, I was meaning to get to that, but I never got to it. So they're dealing with that while the last Ronin and this big bad guy go at it in this big old fight. And then there's this cool looking dude guarding the door to the place. And he's like, I'll take care of that. He looks like a knight. Yeah, he does look a knight. So he takes care of him. And then he thinks he's surrounded by crows, but they're actually ro more robots. And then there's his weapons and gross telling you about. They actually charge up and then he can use them as weapons. And then, then yeah, there's a big old like gargoyle looking thing yeah, that he has, comes across. So he's has, like, um, he's like, I, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going. So he takes out those two and he's like, all right, I want you right here. So then they're right by his mom, but he's gone into the suit that looks like Shredder, which is just really cool looking armor looking thing going on. And he, he actually takes out his own mom and then he goes full on just bad guy. He's got the look like the Shredder. I mean, look at this artwork, just amazing artwork. And so him and the last run have a big fight out everywhere, out of the building, on top of buildings. And just, and he's fighting them by himself. He just, and then he's holding that side like you were talking about. Yeah, he's the whole lot 
Yeah. So. And then she's done with the pump, so she's going to water to help her mom with that. And what's going on? He's having this big fight with him. I and mean, they're just all over the city having a fight. And it's cool because, like, different parts of his brothers he's hitting them with. So, like, here's the side that he just broke and he broke that and then yeah then the broken sword he drives it into him and then he right here is where he takes Donatello's weapon and breaks it across him so then he escapes back to the underground to the sewer which is kind of like a flashback like that's where they always like trained at is underground and that's that was like their hangout so he's down there fighting them while he's doing that. They fix the pump so it sucks all the water and then it pulls them both in right here. And then they get thrown out into the waste water. I mean, the water's just like brown. So now we're gonna have a literally a dirty fight. Yeah, it's really dirty. <laughs> and, then, and then he zaps. And then he zaps them, which then creates this big boom and knocks them both out. So it's like and then, and it's he's real like damaged. Grandma. And then Casey, April's daughter, shows up now after they fix the pump. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, I, I wish I was here to help you. Like, is there anything I can do? And he's like, most important of all is on the last page of that book. And it says, no peace. So then April's morning saying goodbye because now Michelangelo has passed away. So all the Ninja Turtles are dead, and then he has like this flashback of him talking to his brothers. I mean, it's just really like cool, like seeing like, there's Casey, Master Splinter, and all of his brothers, and he says the most important thing is home, and that's his the end. But then we go back. Casey, April's daughter, is over here training, and she's reading this book and trying to learn everything she can about the turtles. And they're in this lab working and you wonder what they're working on. And she's like, how are the tests looking? And then she says, hey there. And it's her looking at something. And then hurry up and grow away. I've got so much cool stuff to teach you. It's the four turtles again. I'm afraid, yeah, I'm afraid yeah. I'm the hotel, I'm the so that's what, that's what she they're regrowing the t turtles again to make new ones, oh. and it says to be continued. <laughs> so, so it's just like a really like you know, it's really sad that he died, but then you know that they're gonna come back and make yeah. new ones, and so then going back in the earth. we're making. That's a really now good it's all the artwork from the other covers of the issues, alternate covers and alternate artwork. This one's cool. I like, I like the one with the, uh, what, this one? This one. Yeah, that's cool, ain't it? Yeah, it's real. It's real good. That was by Eastman. It's so hard that's to That's a cool cover. These people draw this good. Lots of practice. Yeah, that's cool. That's really nice. Yeah, I think that's just a goofy one. This is uh, art by Justin Rowland and Kevin Eastman. That's just supposed to be kind of goofy and silly. This is supposed to be a, um, it's a Batman cover that they're trying to like, reenact. Just cool. It's Batman with Magic Turtles. It's kind of goofy too. Bat Turtle. <laughs> cool with him on the bike. And then that's the last cool. Ronan. Yeah, that's really it, cool. It has um, all of their um, like masks yeah, on the floor. And all their weapons of all the fallen brothers. Yep. And that's it. That's a good book. Who are not like this book? Alright, so there it is. The last Ronin hardcover. And I have to say, this is just... I've never really read any other turtles like I said in the earlier part of it. But... From reading this, it's just awesome. I love the turtles as a kid. I grew up watching all the shows. So to find out who it was, that it was Michelangelo, and then that he almost like sacrificed himself to save the rest of the city, it kind of makes me wonder what's going to be next in store. 
I think the character in here was awesome. Just a great, great add-on to the turtles and their story. Really sad, you know, parts of it, but overall just great to see them release new turtle stuff. Now, I know they are working on right now on the last year's as this video drops, which I will pick up that hardcover and also read it too. So I definitely enjoy the story and highly recommend it. I know they're talking about turning it into a show, which would be really cool. I think the artwork in here is, is amazing. Just really neat little like knockoff to like the past and the present. So overall, I enjoy the story and I highly recommend you read it. And as for Eli, since this is his first video hardcover review book with me. Yeah, it's my first book with you and I think it's really good so I might have this is probably one of my favorite videos so I have to give it one million hundred thousand thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> As other videos we give thumbs up so for these we really don't but Eli definitely approves and he loves loves the last running character. As you can see he's playing with the last running figure right now. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. So guys, if you could check out our I don't know which one's gonna come out first this one or the figure one we'll see. But if you could check out the, the video of the figure review and all the other ones that we will also review, we would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, peace. peace. peace.